So welcome back guys to another video and today I'm gonna be doing a games I've been playing. Now, what I like about making these kind of videos, it gives me a chance to talk about multiple games, give uh, little short impressions, and most importantly, I want folks to be leaving these videos with something new to play. You know, something you maybe you've been on the fence about, maybe a game you haven't heard of, and you walk away from this video with a new game to play. That's my overall goal with this kind of content. Now, the first game I want to talk about is actually a demo to a game that I don't think a lot of folks have heard about. I don't think a lot of people have been into this game. I'm kidding. I'm talking about the Final Fantasy VII demo, the remake. And, you know, a lot of folks have been making videos about this. I've had folks message me on Facebook and social media being like, oh, what do you think about the demo? And I'm like, been kind of tight-lipped about it because I really wanted to talk about it on this video. And my first impressions, I love it. I am, I'm, I'm in the camp of being so excited about the remake. And I think everyone was surprised back in 2015 during E3 when Square Enix was like, yeah, we're remaking Final Fantasy VII. I was like, no way. I never thought Square Enix would have the balls to remake a gem like this because unfortunately, I don't think a remake to this caliber will make everyone happy. And that is definitely something you've seen on social media, you know, especially last week. I mean, a lot of folks were just all about, you know, loving the battle system, hating the battle system. Me personally, I like the battle system because it's something different. I mean, I'll be honest. If it was just a Final Fantasy VII with better visuals and, and better graphics and music and soundtrack and voice acting, I'd be kind of disappointed. When I play a remake, I want to play a remake. I want to play something that's completely different. I mean, I can go back and play Final Fantasy VII on the PlayStation 4 or Nintendo Switch or the PlayStation 1 or I can get it on mobile, I have it on Steam or I could, you know, get a PlayStation 1 emulator and put it on my phone. There are so many ways to play the original Final Fantasy VII that this remake gives it a new breath of fresh air and that's what I really like about it. The battle system is a lot more action oriented. Uh, some may even say it's more hack and slash, but I'll be honest, there are some strategy to the battle system, especially once you get to the final boss in the demo, it, it's, a, it's a little tough. I mean, it's not just pressing X a whole lot and just, you know, fighting it out like Devil May Cry. I mean, there's a little bit more strategy and a little bit more critiqueness to it. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like um, compare the battle system to like Final Fantasy 15 more refined and Kingdom Hearts. That's what it kind of feels like, and I'm very excited for next month to play the remake. It was it was really cool playing the original demo in this remake form because it, that's what it is. It's the original demo of you know the reactor being shut down by Avalanche, being introduced to the cloud, but it's got its own little flair to it. It was making me feel very nostalgic. And you know what's really funny is I got a brand new television a month ago. I've been using the same television since like 2009. It's like a Toshiba 32 inch. Now I have a 43 inch Samsung 4K HDR. And what better time to play the Final Fantasy VII Remake. I remember just seeing the opening alone and my jaw just dropped. My eyes, I started feeling my eyes kind of tear up a little bit because I was, I was feeling that nostalgia. It was almost intoxicating, but I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I know that you know Final Fantasy VII Remake is going to be episodic, but I'll be honest, I feel like this first episode is going to have so much content that it's going to feel like a full-fledged game, most, most definitely. But I cannot wait to dive into this title. Now you guys know I'm a huge Yakuza fan, so I had to get the HD Remaster Collection. Now this is Yakuza 3, 4, and 5, and 5 being the most important game in this collection in my opinion. Uh, it's a very special game. It's got some nostalgic memories for me because while I've never played Yakuza 5 until most recently, it's a game that I remember my co-host from Excess Gaming Podcast, James, talking about because he's a huge Yakuza fan, and that was a game he really wanted, and it finally came out digitally on PS3, and he really enjoyed it. But I didn't get into the Yakuza series until Yakuza Zero, like a lot of folks did. So it's nice to have 
you know, three or four or five on the PlayStation 4. Now I have like all the Yakuza games, for, starting from the PS2 all the way to the PlayStation 4. But most importantly, I have Yakuza 0 through 6 on one, one platform. That is freaking amazing. But when you get the box set, you know, it comes with two discs. Uh, one, the disc is actually missing because it's in my PS4 right now. But that's three and four. That's five. And you get like a little sticker, a RGG Studio sticker with it. But also you get this nice little spacer. It's the Yakuza 5 PlayStation 3 case. Now, there's no game in it. It's more of a novelty sort of thing. And, you know, if you want to put it on your shelf and, you know, you want to have this RGG, you know, you got Yakuza Shrine, it's a good way to do that. But, man, what can I say about Yakuza 5 so far? I haven't went too far into the game. I just finished the first part of Kiru Kazuma, who's trying to still be a, just a civilized, you know, citizen. He's trying to leave the Yakuza life behind. He's been doing that since the first game. And, you know, now he's a taxi driver. He's living in a whole new city. You know, Haruka, the little girl from the very first game, now she is older. She's an adult, and he's trying to have her have a normal life. He's trying to leave the, you know, the orphanage that he was taking care of. He's trying to leave that behind but it keeps following him. The business keeps following him. The, the Yakuza world keeps pulling him back in. So you start off playing as Kiru Kazuma in this new town, a new identity, and it shows a lot of different perspectives. And I love the taxi driving and you know everything else that goes with the Yakuza. But now I'm playing as you know Majima's brother and he's in prison. So I'm going through a whole new crime drama. I think my friend Jason put it best when he talked about the, the he talked about the Yakuza series. He said it's like Japanese Sopranos meets Monty Python. That's that's pretty much the Yakuza series because you have such a serious crime drama, and then you have the most wackiest side missions that you could think of. So I'm really excited to be diving full head on into Yakuza Five. But I will say if you already played Yakuza 5 and you're like, man, should I get this collection? I think you still should because Yakuza 3 is uncensored. That means the Yakuza 3 that you played on PlayStation 3 actually has some censorship to it. So you get to play the full definitive version of Yakuza 3 and you get to have physical copy of Yakuza 5. I mean, this is a great collection and I think it's, I think it's like 60 bucks. So there's 60 bucks for three games, you can't really beat that. Now, the next game I want to talk about is Control, and I have to thank my friend Jason, uh, Black Metal Gamer, for sending me this copy because this is his copy. This guy loved Control so much that he was like, give me your address, I'm going to send you my copy, you have to play this game. And it came out last year, back in August, and it's very underrated. I mean, it was on a couple of, you know, video game articles. It was in the Video Game Awards show. I believe it won some awards as well, but this is a game that you don't really hear a whole lot of people talk about. And it's a big shame because it's made by the same folks who did Alan Wake and Max Payne and Quantum Break. And, you know, you're playing as this girl who is now the director of this secret organization. And she's trying to find out who she is. She's trying to find out where her brother is. She was pretty much a lab rat. She has telekinesis. She can move objects. And it goes into the whole third person shooter perspective. But with that being said, this feels like a last-gen game in a good way. Now, I don't mean that it feels like a dated game. I mean that this feels like a game that I would have played back when I had my Xbox 360, back when I was first, you know, playing games like Alan Wake and Dead Space, and you know, it just has that feel to it. I, it's hard to explain, but it's a very, very good thing. I really do enjoy this game. The only thing that I would say that I would complain about this game is the inventory system's a little cryptic the leveling up's kind of you know skill tree is kind of confusing and the map system is kind of hard to navigate it's not extremely hard but it's kind of difficult but it, with that being said it's still a really good game and the the shooting mechanics you know sitting there you know taking objects from anywhere and using it as a shield and throwing it at other people and shooting them and stuff. It's got that Metroidvania kind of look to it, so you will be backtracking some areas and doing side missions that help level up uh, your character, Jesse, but 
it, it's, it's a really good game. I, I cannot recommend it enough. I know it's dirt cheap now. I know it's on PlayStation Now at the moment. And I believe it might be on Xbox Game Pass as well. If it's on any of those platforms and you're bored, definitely check out Control. Now the next game I want to talk about is actually a digital game that I bought on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, my friend Vic, uh, he recommended it to me. Uh, he was like, man, check this game out. This looks like it's right up your alley. Me and him have a lot of the same taste in games. Nine times out of ten, if he enjoys a game, I'm going to love it too. And a game called Goblin Sword. Now Goblin Sword was originally a mobile game that came out in 2014 and now it's on the Nintendo Switch for five bucks but I got it on sale for two dollars and I'll be honest when I first started playing the game I thought it was going to be a you know Wonder Boy kind of rip off which isn't a bad thing because I love Wonder Boy but it's it's not a Wonder Boy rip off it's more of a hack and slash platformer very linear stage based kind of game and you know you collect gems and money you can go back and upgrade your equipment and armor but it's very linear that's not necessarily a bad thing. I still really enjoyed it. And you know, for two bucks, hell, even five bucks, it's not a bad experience. If you're looking for a cheap game that you can just sit down and play, kind of turn your mind off and just hack and slash and just enjoy some nice, nice pixel art, Goblin Sword, you gotta check that out. Now the last game I want to talk about is an impulse buy. I don't have these often. I don't impulse buy that often, but me and my girlfriend were at GameStop. We were looking for some games for the kids because they have, you know, Xbox One. And I saw this game. It was on Mario Day on the 10th of March, and it was on discount, like half off. I'm like, you know, I'll go ahead and buy it. And that is Yoshi's Crafted World. Now I will admit I love Yoshi's Woolly World on the Wii U. That was a, an absolute gem. I loved it. It was great. Craft the World, in my opinion, kind of takes some steps back. Now, the game visually is beautiful. It's a very handcrafted world, all pun intended. It looks like everything's made of like paper mache and cardboard. I love the art style and the way they've went with this game. You know, Yoshi controls really well. The game is very, very polished. My only complaint about Craft the World, it's, it's a little too easy. Now, I know it's a Yoshi game. Yeah, it's going to be an easier uh, platformer compared to like Mario or Donkey Kong, but it was almost mundane of how easy it was. And it's kind of a collect-a-thon too, uh, where Woolly World it was a little bit more linear in the sense that you would go from stage to stage like your traditional platformer. This one right here, you have to collect, you know, like flowers to advance, kind of like Mario 64 with stars or Banjo Kazooie with puzzle pieces. But yeah, I. I didn't like the game as much as I wanted to. I mean, I'm pretty far into it. I'm pretty sure it's a short game as well. But, you know, like Kirby, I gotta be in the mood to play those kind of games. And would I recommend this game? Absolutely. I would recommend it for, you know, maybe younger players, maybe for folks that just wanna play a relaxing game. This is definitely up your alley. But if you're looking for a little bit of a challenge, Stay far, far away from Yoshi's Crafted World. Uh, I'm glad I didn't pay 60 bucks on it. I would have been really upset if I bought this day one like I initially was going to a couple months back. But Crafted World, I mean, if I'd give it a score, I'd give it probably about a five out of 10. It's, it's okay, it's all right.
But anyway, guys, that's some games I've been playing recently. What have you been playing? Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you guys. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to only subscribe, but also hit the bell for notifications so you're notified on all future videos coming out on this channel. And also, I have a Teespring store. That's right, you guys can get some Xander Scullion merch, and it's all going to be very unique. I'm not going to just do t-shirts with Xander Scullion or XS Gaming on it. I want to do something a little different. So I got some really unique ideas and t-shirts that are up, including some Kevin Savage merch for some of you folks, and some coffee mugs as well. And you know, all the proceeds that go with the Teespring are going to be going back to the show. So every t-shirt, every coffee mug you buy helps make the show bigger, it helps me upgrade my equipment, it helps me, you know, get more resources to make this channel what I want it to be and, you know, add more to the podcast and whatnot. So every little bit supports and thank you guys so much. As always, guys, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and as always, happy gaming.